the BBC have confirmed plans to cut dozens more jobs in its local operations as, it's ba as it battles to fill a black hole in its finances. Is there ever going to be a year or a month where we don't read out that sort of headline? They have got a pledge, however, to spend £80 million on diversity programmes. The broadcaster plans to shed 500 roles despite this uh, by March 2026 and make 500 million quid's worth of savings. Roger Bolton, former BBC presenter, is with us. Roger, good afternoon to you. Um, this is a bit of a work in progress, isn't it, for the head honchos over there at the Beeb? I seem to be reading out this headline almost on a weekly basis right now. Well, it is because um, the BBC, uh, the licensee, is worth, what, about 30 35% less in terms of what it'll buy now than it was 10 years ago. The last Conservative government um, deliberately started to squeeze the BBC mm. And the result is that there's been this rolling period of cuts. Now, I think there was a fair bit of fat to get rid of initially, uh, but now we're cutting into things which really matter. So there's a problem with the World Service. Uh, cuts are coming up there. That's deeply worrying. There's a, these cuts in local radio. There are a whole range of other things. I think what worries me about it is that we're now cutting into things that really matter and I wish the public should be consulted. I mean, it shouldn't just be the BBC saying, oh, we, we'll cut that or we'll cut yeah. this. We'll need to have some proper conversation about what we, who pay for the BBC, what, what our priorities are. That's a very good point. And when it, on that very point, Roger, I mean, I, I mentioned about, you know, I know it's a very sort of Daily Mail thing, they're spending £80 million on diversity things, but you would, regardless of where somebody sits politically, you might go, hang on, you're trying to save £500 million, but you're spending £80 million on making sure you've ticked every single box, whether it comes to religion or gender, whatever it happens to be. I mean, do, do the BBC really need to be doing this right now? Yeah, they do. I mean, the point is, if the BBC is going to be the British Broadcasting Corporation, it has to reflect Britain as a whole. Now, take a statistic. A third of senior BBC figures went to private schools. Now, really? Is that... Are they going to be representative, understand most people in this country? Yeah. You've got a situation where the majority of people making decisions in the BBC past have been white males. Now, you know, a lot of good white males around. Thank God when I was there, I didn't go to public school, by the way. Uh, thank God that when I was there, they were employing white males. But you know, you need to have, broadly, a representative group of people making these decisions. And in, a, in key areas, uh, it is, they don't. If you look at the so-called BAME, which is a horrible term, you know, uh, BAME figures, um, in front of screen, the problem's largely solved. Actually, you could argue that there's a you know, slightly higher proportion of people than there should be mm -hmm. of uh, of uh, mixed race, shall we say, or non-whites, presenting. Broadly, that's sorted. Behind the scenes, in terms of those who take decisions, it hasn't been sorted. So I think that it's entirely proper for the BBC to, to have a look at this and try and get people into positions of power who represent the country. But, you know, don't forget the white working class. Well, I was going to say, you know, I come from a working class background. I, you know, I've often wondered that when I used to go to the to television centre down there at White City, you know, I'd, I'd look around and I'd speak to people and I'd, I'd speak to, you know, that classic line when I remember one producer saying, well, basically I'm working class. My dad was just a doctor. My mum was a dentist. I thought, whoa, whoa, stop there, mate. You're not working class. That, that's, that's middle. That's absolutely dictionary definition of middle class. Nonetheless, so I see the problem. But... One of the issues, and like yourself, I, I know some fairly senior characters at the BBC, a lot of them have been there for decades. We're not going to just fire them, are we, all of a sudden? It's no surprise, Roger, that there's quite a lot of white people might work at the BBC because they've been there forever, or they've been yeah, in the industry quite, forever. Yeah, there are quite a lot of talented people there, you know, um, as well. No, I just think that if you, if you, you know, what the, you've got to make sure that you've got a broad representation of the country. For, I mean, for example, 30, 40 years ago, not enough women in positions of power. So when they're thinking of programme ideas, the people who are thinking of the ideas are men, and therefore they tend to play less, in, you know, they don't have certain experiences. Would they have commissioned anything about menopause? Would they have looked at, you know, postnatal depression? Would it, wouldn't it would have occurred to me, you know, 40 years ago, that was a proper subject to look at, because I was not a woman. So it's vital yeah. that women are there commissioning. But also, it's vital that the BBC gets decision-making out of London. I mean, what Brexit demonstrated, among other things, is that I think the BBC was out of touch with the feelings of people in different parts of the country. So you've got to reach out to them. And I think, uh, you know, you can pick out this as being a diversity um, of a particular sort. But I think that wider push for diversity is needed. 
the BBC has been run by a sort of mid-class elite, too many people from private backgrounds. I mean, they've done their best. I'm not arguing that they don't do well either. It's just not healthy. I get we that. No, I get that. I, I, wonder, I question why it would cost £80 million to implement something like this. I would have thought, Roger, you could naturally, you know, as, as an organic process, as people leave, and th then you can look at more... Um, d diversity of, of, of recruitment, but what you don't want to do is suddenly go, right, here's a guy who's not white, he's nowhere near as good as the guy that is white, but we'll employ him anyway because we've got this £80 million pound scheme. Well, you don't want that, but I don't think the BBC will have a problem with that because so many talented people will still want to get in there. You know, you're not going to get in there if you're not talented, but it's easier at the moment if you go into private school or maybe Oxbridge or something else or live near London, it's probably easier to get in into positions of decision making. But it is if you're being white, black, whatever you are, from a working class family from a different part of the country. Yeah. What the BBC has to do is spend money getting out to those people, encouraging them, saying, look, the BBC can be for you. We recognise that your educational qualifications are likely to be less because you have done all the help and the push from other people. Let's look at ways we can get you in. Now, I think you apply that to the white working class, you apply that to people in different parts of the country, you apply that to people from immigrant backgrounds as well, because you want, ultimately, the best people yeah. from the broader spectrum. So I don't think this is a big issue. I mean, the larger issue is, we're now, for me, if I may say so, is we're starting to cut things now that I think really matter. The public needs to be consulted about that. The decision shouldn't be taken only on the sixth floor of television centre. Indeed. No, I, I agree with that, but I, I do wonder whether we're more talking about class than anything else. I, I know that somebody told me a little while ago that when White City was first built, they thought, well, this is a great area because there's, you know, Shepherd's Bush, big council estates around there, a lot of locals will be able to get jobs. Uh, didn't really happen other than in sort of cleaning capacities. Greg Dyke, some years later, famously, you will remember, Roger, talked about the place being hideously white. And uh, what, I, what I sense happened is in their um, thirst to stop being hideously white, they employed lots of non-white people, but they were merely just middle-class versions of non-white people, <laughs> people who never thought these jobs were beyond them anyway. But, so, I mean, so there's I, lots of black I, and brown I, people yeah, in the know, BBC, I, but they're all posh as well. I know I see what you're saying, I, I hideously white was, I think, well, typical Greg, it's good fun, Greg, and it was a great headline, but I don't agree with it. Yeah. But anyway, but I was just talking in my podcast uh, about to, to Trevor Phillips, Sir Trevor Phillips, you yeah. know, because of black from background. And it, he was really interesting because he was saying he thinks the term BAME is outdated and he doesn't like it. He said, particularly now, if you look at the law and everywhere else, a, people from Asian backgrounds often are, you know, are doing wonderfully well. So it's not a question of give the person a job uh, because of their colour. It's they're very mm. talented. Are we sure that their colour is not holding them back in our society? Yep. Now, tokenism that you say is wrong. It was wrong to have token women presenters. You know, never the main presenter on a news programme, always, you know, next to them doing the light items. That was token. Yes, and we all were guilty of that um, and uh, or participating uh, in that. So the tokenism is wrong, but real ability is out there, and the best broadcasters want the best talent, regardless of background, but sometimes you have to go and look for it. If you go to Oxbridge and you're white, you have a middle-class background, and you live near London, you don't need a lot of help, you just jump on the tube. Lots of people can't get on the tube and don't have those qualifications and would make brilliant people. I agree. Roger. Well, we will watch with interest how this one pans out. Roger, it's always a pleasure to talk. Thank you. He is Roger Bolton, of course, former BBC presenter. He's been on the telly forever. Roger, thank you to him.